I feel like everyone who makes videos on Linux has this love-hate relationship with Caden Live. Sometimes it is the worst thing ever created, sometimes it's actually really good. But typically it's thought of as the best Linux video editor, but I want to go and test that theory because really I've only used two of them. I've used OpenShot and I've used Caden Live. And I feel like a lot of people have only used Caden Live and haven't experienced anything else. So as of the 4th of January, what I'm going to be doing is switching to a new video editor and I'm going to be editing everything with that until I mention otherwise. And I'm not just going to stop at one. I'm going to go through everything that people think is even a remotely competent video editor until I can finally decide whether Caden Live is really the best Linux video editor. Now, if you've been on this channel for any reasonable length of time, you've probably noticed that I don't do much in the way of editing. Most of what I do can be done directly inside of OBS. So doing things like switching my camera location or switching to a full cam, that's all done with OBS layouts because I really don't want to edit that in post. But doing things like my camera color correction, that's just done in OBS because once again, I don't want to do it in post. And plus, if I do it in OBS, that means I can just color correct the camera and not color correct the entire video, which would mess with the colors of my desktop. I guess I could specify the small portion the webcam actually is in and then just color correct that part. But then if the webcam moved, I would have to go and then move the box around. And I don't want to deal with that. I'd much rather just do it while I'm actually recording. And as for audio correction, my compression, suppression, and noise gating is all done directly inside of OBS. Now, there are some things I should add to my editing. So things like DSing, which is basically getting rid of the S sound so they're not as harsh and also doing a bit of EQ, that's stuff that I should be doing in post, but I'm not right now. And typically what I'll say for editing is if I want to do any transitions, so say I want to have a fade at the start or a fade at the end or a fade between clips, I like fades. Fades, I feel, are a really nice transition to use. Or if I want to have things like messing with transforms, like how I have my camera inside of the Patreon screen at the end, that should be done inside of OBS, but right now I'm doing that inside of my editor. I probably will swap that around though. And the other thing is if I want to show any overlays that I'm not exactly sure where they're going to be. So things like the YouTube sub icon, if I want to show like an image to actually demonstrate something I'm talking about and I'm not showing it on screen, if I make a mistake and want to have some text overlay, basically that sort of stuff. Now with that bit of audio correction I mentioned before, the reason I wasn't doing it inside of Caden Live basically is because the Caden Live interface for that is... Terrible. We go terrible. Now, I could do it in something like Audacity. That would be a good option. But then I'll have to go and strip the audio out, then go and modify it and put the audio back. I'd much rather have it all be done in a single tool. I don't know what it is about Caden Live's development. Maybe it's because it's a really big application and there's not that many people working on it. But this application seems to break just as much as Windows does between its different versions. Every single other version, some critical feature I need is completely busted. And now I don't mean doing things like transcoding between random formats that no one ever actually uses or adding obscure effects that have no productive use case. I mean things that are just fundamental to the way that I actually work. So doing things like creating a new title, importing too many clips at once, scrubbing through a timeline too quickly, adding more than two things at a time into my render queue, which I always do because I bulk record videos and bulk edit videos, so I like to just, you know, bulk render them as well, or just cutting clips too quickly. All of these things at some point in the about year and a half I've been using Caden Live has caused the application to crash, not once, but every single time I tried to do it. Now, luckily at the state that it's in right now on the Arch repos, it is completely stable. Everything that I need to do, it works perfectly. I don't have a single problem with it. It doesn't even just have random crashes like it did in the past. It is rock solid right now. But I guarantee that the next time it updates, something is going to break. And this is why everyone recommends using the app image for it, because then you can decide when you're going to update. And if it does happen to break, it is very easy to roll back. Just keep the old app image and then delete the new one and you're good to go. 
Now, when I say that it works perfectly, I mean that it's either not buggy or the bugs that are there are very little things that by themselves don't really matter. But there are some weird things about the interface that do sort of break from time to time, which have been problems the entire time I've used the app. But I think they're there by design, not because they're not working properly. So, for example, let's just open up Caden Live. I don't know if we'll be able to cause this to actually happen. Let's go and do something like make the interface look like this. Now, if I open up a second window here, sometimes when I actually go and delete this window, it's going to go and actually resize this here. Now, it seems to not be doing it right now, but occasionally when you actually go and resize the Caden Live window like that, it will just shift around all of your interfaces, which completely defeats the point of having a button in here somewhere, I don't remember where it is, that actually lets you go and save a specific layout. You have other little things which I don't particularly like, such as not being able to apply an effect to every single clip in your timeline. If you want to go and do that, what you have to do is copy the effects from one clip and then paste it individually on each of the other clips. Now, technically you can go and paste the clip on every single clip at once, except that sometimes when you do that, the effect will then go and break. And being able to apply an effect like that is really the only way that it becomes practical to actually do audio correction in my case. Because the way that I actually record my videos is I break everything down into these very small clips. There's two reasons for this. One, I feel like when I restart the recording, it gives me a fresh take at what I'm trying to say rather than, you know, keeping the recording going and then trying to restart. I feel like pressing the record button just gives me that fresh start. And also the second thing is if I, you know, happen to have any of the clips become corrupted or anything like that, then I just lose that one clip rather than my entire recording. Also, Caden Live does not have a scripting interface, so Basically, if you want to do any automation of Caden Live, you're going to have to go and automatically modify the project file outside of the application, which isn't great because there's a lot of things that I do in every single video, like applying a fade to the start, putting in my outro, having the YouTube overlay in the first 30 or so seconds. All of that stuff right now I'm doing manually, but a lot of other video editors have a way to do that in just one click. And I'm generally not a fan of having desktop environment applications installed on my system. If Caden Live was just a generic QT app, I would accept it. But because Caden Live is the one KDE app I actually have installed, by downloading Caden Live, I also pull in half of KDE, which is really, really annoying to deal with, especially when any updates come. So these are the editors I'm looking at, and this is by no means a complete list. This just happens to be the ones that I've at least heard are pretty good. So if there's anything else that you particularly like or want me to try out, feel free to leave it in the comment section down below, and I will be looking at some others very shortly. So the first one we have is Olive. So Olive is one of those cult favorite video editors. It is a basically a node-based video editor, similar to something like Adobe After. Effects? Is that the one I'm thinking of? And I've used this one for like a little bit, but it's still very much in development. When I last used it, it had a memory leak, which caused it to use 32 gigs of RAM to render a one minute video. So hopefully that bug is gone. And if it is, it should be a really good editor because from the brief experience I had, it was absolutely amazing. I also plan to use OpenShot again, which is the one that I used back when I originally started my channel. When I left it, I absolutely hated this application, but maybe going back to it, it'll be a refreshing experience. Also, I've never tried the video editing mode inside of Blender. It's got a perfectly normal timeline editor that you'd expect any sort of video editor to have. And I, I don't know, I imagine that it's probably going to be better than OpenShot because Blender has a lot of money behind it and has a lot of developers working on it. So maybe this will actually be pretty good. Also, another one is Flowblade. Now, I haven't actually ever used this one before, but judging from the screenshots and the brief videos I've seen, it seems like it's somewhere in between OpenShot and Caden Live. It doesn't have as much as Caden Live does, but it looks like what it does have is considerably more polished. So, maybe this one will be pretty good as well. Now, I also do want to try out DaVinci Resolve because there is a Linux version. Now, this one isn't free and open source software. All of the others, like this one, this one, this one, this one, all FOSS software. But I do want to try out DaVinci Resolve and see if something proprietary actually is going to be better. 
And because I know someone is going to ask this, even if you're not in the comment section, Donald, someone else is going to ask this. Yes, I will use FFmpeg at some point. I'll try to go into it with like a clean slate and not hating it, but I can't guarantee that I'm going to enjoy my experience. Now, just in case anyone is curious, I feel like this video is going to be edited inside of Flowblade if that's wrong. If I work out how, there'll be a thing above my head here, but I'm probably going to be using Flowblade for this one. Now, I might eventually come back to Caden Live, but I do want to see what's actually out there to actually properly make a judgment on the state of Linux video editors. Now, just in case it was unclear, yes, I will be doing videos on each of these editors as I try them out. So, I think that's going to be pretty much everything for me. Thank you guys for watching. But before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So, a special thank you to Chris, Joachim, Donald, Michael, Andre, Nathan, David, Monza, Will, Chico, Bento, Joseph, Mitchell, Peter D, Tony, Tushar, and all of my $2 supporters. If you'd like to support my work, there are links down below to my Patreon, subscribe to our Libre Pay, all that sort of stuff. I've got my podcast, Tech Over Tea, available basically anywhere that you can listen to podcasts. And then this channel is available on Odyssey, Library, and BitChute. So I think that's going to be pretty much everything for me, and I'm out.